lot of people and companies were were and are affected by war that is being waged by Russia against Ukraine, or as they call it in Russia, special military operation. Uh, and companies suffered and individuals, not only in Ukraine, but also in Russia, there are some Western companies that were nationalized or on the brink of being nationalized by the Russian government. Do you think it's going to be a tool, a mechanism to get compensation for companies or people that were affected by the Russian invasion, by the military actions, by the bombings, uh, where property destroyed, companies were destroyed, uh, human lives uh, were lost? Uh, we have precedents like it with uh, Iran. They were hit with a judgment over um, bombing of uh, U.S. Uh, Marines uh, barracks in uh, Lebanon. Uh, we had a precedent like that with uh, Libya that was involved in downing of a Pan Am flight, where the Austin Award was won against them. Uh, were the victims so any money? That's a different story. So. Can, is there anything that could be used in uh, against Russia down the road? Yeah, well, the down the road is down the road is the key word here. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, there are so many discussions right now, uh, and I'm I'm part of the discussions. I spoke in different panels. We okay. in fact there will be a panel in a few days next mm -hmm. week mm -hmm. discussing how do you compensate victims. Right because there, there are so many different international issues, international legal issues, domestic legal issues. Ukraine is right now uh, is in the process of adopting its own law that would provide for compensation uh, okay. to the victims based on the seized Russian and, and forfeited, presumably there will be forfeited Russian assets or Russian business mm -hmm. assets. Uh, but there is, as of this time, there is no functional international mechanism for that. Uh, there are many people there. Columbia University, Columbia Law School is engaged in developing uh, certain uh, structures that would allow to do that. Uh, but it's 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 a long way. It takes a long way. I can give you an example. For example, the uh, Iraq Kuwait War. Okay. Uh, the uh, tribunal, uh, there was a special commission set up to compensate damages to the victims of the Iraqi aggression against Kuwait. Okay. Uh, and just, um, I believe it was set up in the beginning of the 90s. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just uh, saw an announcement in the beginning of this year to almost 30 years or more than 30 30 years for this commission to actually achieve to to uh wow. to, to complete its work you have to have so, patience that's yes a long time unfortunately yes mm -hmm. as they say will of justice uh uh rotating very yeah. slowly yes but that that's strong. that's what it is and th that was the united nations commission that was set up by the securities council by the security un security council mm -hmm. uh, where all the members of security council at least did not veto the uh creation of such commission what do you think is going to happen right now when russia and china are members of a security of course, council absolutely yeah yes so but they, they, just in case would you suggest uh just in case would you suggest for people who are affected by the war to start filing claims so that they can have judgments that they could possibly possibly enforce in the future against russia I think the, the very first thing that these people should be doing is making sure that they have all the documentation of damages okay. and understanding what happened, how it happened. Make sure they have as much uh, evidence as possible to bring such claims. Uh, if these are U.S. companies or U.S. people who've been damaged, uh, as far as I know, Department of Commerce right now is uh, uh, interested in hearing about cases like that where U.S. Mm -hmm. Uh, person's been uh, damaged. So we'll, we'll certainly be happy to refer to the appropriate contacts there. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are not a U.S. citizen, not a U.S. person, uh, then it could be, uh, there could be something that in your country of nationality, that is the government is doing something to help you uh, to deal with the situation. Okay, that's so very there, there, At least mm -hmm. there, there are ways to do that. There are certain cases there could be even a lawsuit that could be brought if there is a, mm -hmm. if there is a violation of international law mm -hmm. that is involved. There could be a possibility of bringing a lawsuit or even uh, arbitration proceedings. Uh, but of course, to... uh, like you said, it's a very long process and 
we don't know whether there's any result that's going to be available down the road because Russia voluntarily is not going to give up Russian property, especially uh, that's located in Russia and even abroad. You bet they're going to uh, fight uh, tooth and nail for it. And uh, I want to ask you the way this war is going to end, in my opinion, is with some kind of a peace treaty because it looks like both sides are back down right now. Nobody's really winning. There's not going to be a clear win in the end. No clear victor. So hopefully soon there's going to be some kind of a peace agreement. In that peace agreement, can Russian Federation specifically state that we are not responsible for any damages, but in return, we're going to give uh, Ukraine peace? Uh, well... <laughs> I think you're touching a lot of political questions. Uh, so we don't shy just, away from any topic. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, yeah so many, uh, well, at least the 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 latest uh, poll results in Ukraine indicate that 86 percent of Ukrainian populations would not right. agree that their government would sign any peace treaty with the Russian Federation mm -hmm. uh, uh, unless uh, all of the territories uh, that are uh, com captured by Russia starting from 2014. Uh, uh, liberated. Right. So uh, I don't know about the chances of uh, this type of peace agreement coming uh, anytime soon. Right. But uh, from a stand from from a general standpoint, all wars end up with some type of peace agreement. Exactly. Uh, whether, whether it's uh, whether it's First World War or the Second World War, there was always some type of peace of agreement, uh, and the uh, losing side. Uh, agrees for the reparations to to, mm -hmm. to pay the reparations, right? Uh, and uh, there was a, a once once and and that type of reparations are uh, they they are typically the way it works the structure that, that these reparations are collected in a in a certain fund uh, and then in a certain commission that the uh, the victims the uh, persons who lost uh, who, who, who uh suffered losses they can bring claims in this commission based on this well, operations gene we certainly hope that there will be peace soon and then we no longer have to talk about sanctions the people that were harmed get uh compensated justly and we can all uh move on gene thank you so much for your time we appreciate it and i urge everybody to watch our videos to to see and here, answers to commonly asked legal questions. We could be found on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, on our website, jurisdue.com. Thank you for your time, and please stay tuned until next time. Jean, Thank you, Michael. Thank, Thank you. you, Michael, very much. Thanks again for the invitation. It was a pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.